So in a continuation of wiring diagrams to do with lighting circuits, it's been requested that we look at two gang switches. Let's just remind ourselves what we mean by gangs. So if we look at this switch here, this is a one gang switch. There's only one switch on the front. And obviously these have got two, making it a two gang. And if we move them in, we've got a three and a four gang switch. When we flip them over, however, something subtly different is the fact that you can only get these in this style as two-way switches. Now we're used to working with two-way switches when they look like this, but we also know that we could get a one-gang switch which is one-way and a one-gang switch which is an intermediate switch. When we start looking at these switches, all the switches in them are two-way. Meaning if you did need an intermediate switch, you probably have to change style of switches to a grid switch, and we'll perhaps look at that in a future video. So just bear in mind that the two gang, the four gang, and the three gang switch, when you turn them over, are all two way switches. In this video, we're gonna look at two lighting points and two switches, so we're gonna have a two gang switch. And let's presume that this is in the kitchen area and this is in the dining room, so it's a kitchen diner, and you wanna be able to turn on your kitchen light and your dining room light separately from one location. To help you, as always, I've left a link in the description where you can download the drawings that we are gonna use in this series of videos as we go through. It might be that I change or alter them slightly, so you may have to adapt the drawings I give you, depending on where the series goes. It's gonna use the three plate method. If you haven't already studied the videos on the three plate method to start with, please go back and do them. We will also go and look at this as the two plate method and then some variants on it as well. But today's one is gonna have a two gang switch using the three plate method in order to have these two lights, kitchen and dining room area, switched independently. We often see a two or possibly a three gang switch at the bottom of the stairs with one light a switch doing, say, the, the lower ground floor and one doing the first floor. So you can turn on the upstairs light when you go to bed. And normally when you get up there, you can also turn it off. And we'll look at that in other presentations. It could be that this is ground floor, first floor, and outside light, and that's near maybe the front door where you come in. So there are areas which we're likely to see a multi-gang light switch. And we're gonna concentrate two gang switches today. So this switch here will control this light, and this switch here will control this light. And as I said to you, that these are two-way switches. However, you can use a two-way switch as a one-way switch, and we will today. So we've got a common and a common on our two switches, L1 and L2, L1 and L2, and this one quite handily says to use this as a one-way switch, use L1. So in both these switches, to use them as a one-way switch, is identified that use common and L1. Great. Let's bring this one in here, another two gang switch, turn it over. The only information I've been given is common L1 and L2. So on these switches, you'd have to perhaps play around with it. Once you'd use the manufacturer for a while, you'd understand what they are. But you'll find you use common and L1, okay, and it might be correct, or you might have to swap it around to L2. It's not, not the end of the world. It just means that when the switches are in and you test, it might be they're the wrong way round for on compared to off and on compared to off. Therefore, you just have to move it from, say, if you used L2, just pop it into L1, and it reverses the throw of the switch, so it will go the other way around then. I'm sure that's something you're going to cover in college, if not, you'll cover as your apprenticeship progresses. We're going to use one millimeter squared PVC, PVC twin and CPC cable, often called on site twin and earth cable, in order to take a feed from our consumer unit to light number one and a drop down to the switch, feed across to light number two and a drop down to the switch. Often on site, this is 1.5 millimeters squared as well. And we know we're going to have to identify our circuit protective conductor with green and yellow sleeving. So this will go on to identify, it's on our drawing, obviously we'll use green and yellow. As I said, it's a three plate method. If you haven't done the three plate method video series that's out there, please go back and have a look at it before we start looking at two gang and multi gang switches as we will in this mini series. But it's gonna follow the same process. These up here are wiring diagram drawings. So here, here, and here. So these three positions, that looks like the back of a two gang switch. These look like either a baton lamp holder, bring in the dolly as well, and a ceiling rose and pendant. So we've looked at these previously, we've got a block of three, block of three, block of two, and likewise here, block of three, block of three, block of two, and we've simulated that on here with our blocks of two, three, and three, 
and we're going to be using the connections that we're really comfortable with from the three plate looping method that we've seen previously. I'm going to bring the supply in from the consumer unit down here. The connections in here aren't really helpful as a wiring diagram. You'd be bringing your CPC in from your earth block within your consumer unit. You'd bring your neutral from your neutral block or RCBO, etc. And then you've got your line conductor from the top of the fuse. So this is representing the fuse, neutral link and our earth terminal. We're going to bring in a twin and CPC cable from our consumer unit. It could have come from another room. So if this was the kitchen and dining room, it might have been that the um, hallway or downstairs toilet area could have had another feed coming into here and across to here, but I'm gonna bring it in from the consumer unit for this one. So let's bring the feed in first. So let's start off with the CPC. Again, you'll be using a rule in order to get yours really neat. Let's bring our CPC into the light fitting from our consumer unit. As we said, it's gonna have green and yellow sleeving on it. So let's strike it out with a, a little bit of yellow, just to make it look a little bit more like a CPC. Next, bring the neutral. So it's this block of three here. We tend not to go in the outside block terminals because that's where the flex, in this case for the ceiling rows and pendant would go in the outside ones. That's just common practice. So you've got two really in the neutral block to choose from. And I'm just gonna pop it into the first one. So let's see how we're gonna do. I'm gonna bring it right down. I'll bring it right down and across. And bring my neutral down to here. So that's my neutral and I need my permanent line. And again, I'm gonna go in the looping terminal block here, the block of three, we've looked at it before. It's not connected to anything, the center block of three, and I'm gonna bring it out of there. Again, it's a brass block, doesn't matter which of the holes you come um, in or out of, but let's come at that first one there for me, and I'm gonna put that into the top of the overcurrent protection device. So that's that cable brought in. We've brought in our PVC, PVC, twin and CPC, or twin and earth cable. For us, it's one millimeter squared. Permanent line, neutral CPC. We've put the CPC in the earth terminal within the light fitting itself. So it's gone into the earth terminal within the light fitting itself. We've brought our neutral into our block of three for our neutral and our permanent line into our center block of three, which is our loop. We're gonna bring a cable across now to the dining area. So we've got to bring the, the feed across. So we're gonna bring a permanent line, neutral and CPC across from this light fitting to this light fitting. So let's start off with the CPC. So let's bring that one across. That's the CPC going in. It's gonna get a little bit crazy with cables as we move forward. So listen and understand and perhaps draw yours as you go along. Pause, stop, pause, stop as you're trying to work out where I'm putting each of the conductors. So we're gonna take the neutral next. So the lines can come out there. So let's try bring a low neutral down. Let's bring our neutral across. And I'll go into that one just there. And now our permanent line connection out and across. So there we go. We've got our connections in here. So we've brought our line across, permanent line into loop. We've brought our neutral across into our neutral terminal and our CPC all in our twin and CPC cable. And it looks reasonably neat for a freehand job now, but it's gonna get a little bit messy when we start bringing the cables down to the switches because there's gonna be some crossing over. So just take your time to watch what we're doing next. So as I said, these are gonna be used as one-way switches. So when we come back to these two switches here, I'm gonna use common and one of the other terminals. So if we look here, I've identified the two commons and they're always opposite ups. So we've got two commons there, so a common and a common. So a common in both of these will have the permanent line from the dining room and the permanent line from the kitchen into common. And then we'll have a switching line going back. We're gonna stick with twin and CPC cables. Um, lots of colleges uh, use twin and CPC down to the switch and industry does. In my college, we used to use twin and brown, which meant we didn't need to oversleeve or identify this. The cable coming down to the switch, as we've talked about in loads of other presentations, will have a permanent line, CPC, and a blue conductor that is the switching line. Therefore, we put a little bit of brown sleeving on it to identify it as a switching line, and we will do on the drawing. I'm gonna try my best to keep this neat now. So I've got to bring this down and bring the CPC down, the switching line and the permanent line down. So what shall we start with, Gary? Shall we start with the CPC? So my CPC in my cable, I'm just gonna kick, let's kick that one down to here. 
and I'm just going to bring my CPC through the box and bring it around into there. It's possible that on, if you're at college you're using a plastic box with a um, earth terminal in the back so you can secure your CPCs. In industry it might be that you've chased a metal box into the wall and there is a terminal in the back for your CPCs and as you get to multi-gang switches, you might want to try a slightly deeper box because it gives you a little bit more room, especially if we ended up making these both two-wayed, and we'll go on and look at that in other videos. So that's the CPC almost done. Let's just put the yellow on it, just to give it that look of a CPC. So that's the first one down in our twin and CPC cable. We've got to bring down our permanent line. Our permanent line connection comes out of our looping terminal here, and we've got to bring it into common. So again, this is where you're going to get a little bit um, clever with your cable. So I'm going to bring that across there and then I'm just going to kick it down so you can see it coming out of there. I'm going to bring it into my two gang switch and I'm going to pop it into my common terminal there. That just leaves one more. So it's now the blue conductor which will be identified with brown sleeve and there's our switching line coming back. And we know that's going to go this side of the lamp. So we'll have a neutral this side and a switching line this side in the block of two in order to control the light fitting when we have it. So let's bring the blue one out of there. So how am I gonna make this look neat, Gary? Mm, let's bring, bring it down here. I'm gonna kick it across there. I'm gonna join it here. And then I'm gonna bring it in to there. So I've gone into that one there. Wouldn't matter which one I chose, I just tried to make it look a little bit more clear that it's gone into there. So I've brought my cable back which is line, CPC, and switching line, but it's not a switching line until I identify it with brown sleeving. So I'm gonna put some brown sleeving on this end and brown sleeving on that end in order that we've got control. So the permanent line from the consumer unit comes into loop, comes down to the common. When that blade is in this position over here, so we switch it, the switching line comes back and goes up to here, which would have my brown, going up to my light, blue this side coming up to my light. Let's just put a, a nice bright lamp maybe in there. So we've got a, we've got a light shining then. That's what we've got there. So that's the twin and CPC cable coming down with our permanent line CPC and switching line. And we connected it in. Brown one went into a common terminal and it didn't matter because you didn't say we didn't know, it went into either L1 or L2 to start with. And when we do our dead tests, we'd be able to work out whether that was actually on or off. If we found it was the wrong way around, all you'd do is come and take that blue conductor with the brown sleeving out and pop it into either the L1 or L2, the opposite of what it was in, in order to get it correct. Let's do the same on this one here. So we've got a now a separate cable coming down, twin and CPC, in order to be switch number two. Start again with the CPC. We'll just kick that one down into here. My CPC comes in. That's into that box. And I now need to bring down into common my permanent line. I'm going to bring that one into here. This switch is slightly easier to look neater. And then my blue conductor, which isn't a neutral, so I don't need it on this side. I need it on this side, which is my switching line in my cable. And I'm gonna bring that down and I'm gonna go into this one just there. So L1 or L2, didn't matter. Uh, put some brown sleeve on both ends. So what we've got now is the permanent line comes from here into the loop and it comes along then into the loop. It comes down into this switch. When I change the blade position of this switch to here, but it's a switching line onto here, which would be connected to my lamp in order to make it illuminate. I need a neutral on the other side. I'm going to put a lamp in. And there we have it. In the current position that we're in, both these switches, the lights are off. By changing the position of the blade, in other words, operating the switch, you'll change the blade position and turn on the light. We've got a two gang switch. We've got this one here in the kitchen, controlled by this switch. And the one next to it controls the dining area light as well. So we've added a two gang switch to our drawing using the three plate method. We can go on and look at this again and we can use the two plate method and see how that would work. And again, if you haven't checked out that series of videos, I recommend you do 
in order to get comfortable with it before you start looking at multi-gang switches. That's pretty much it then, isn't it? Our consumer unit, light one, light two, and a two-gang switch. The connections in here, here, and here, not as clear as they could be, but hopefully clear enough, can explain how you can control two lights in the same area separately from two switches. We'll go on and we'll also make this two-way, example being if this was a, uh, the ground floor light in by the front door and this was the light at the top of the stairs, we always be able to turn this one on from another location. So what we'll end up doing is making this one here in another drawer in two-way. So this would be the uh, ground floor light and this would be the, the landing light switch from lower and upper. Okay, so we'll look at that as well. Hopefully this is an introduction. Remember you can download my notes from a link in the description in order if you want to follow along with this. As we looked at in this video presentation, a two gang light switch controlling independently two lights in the same area. And as always, I hope this video has been some help.